So today I want to get into my 10 takeaways from a wild day of college football. And all that's coming up after the bumble. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You gotta help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, Ken folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step. Mill, consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time today. I want to react and give you my takeaways from a wild week of college football, beginning with the 11 a.m. kickoff in which we saw both Arkansas State and Louisiana give the Big 12 the business. Arkansas State walked into Bill Snyder Family Stadium and walked out with $550,000, excuse me, $550,000 of his money. Yo. Then we had Louisiana walk into Jack Trice Stadium and take $350,000 of money that Iowa State really didn't have to give. And Jamie Pollard has outlined that for everybody to see. They're in dire need of playing football. They played football and they got rocked. Now we're talking about the Sun Belt as a Power 5 team. The Fun Belt trying to be here at the end with college football. That's number one. Number two is Ohio State Michigan might actually play football this fall, right? I had all the jokes that were being thrown at me by Ohio State fans that I was tweeting about a game that I bought for pay-per-view, $55 that I get into about Oklahoma talking about, yo, it's Missouri State. They ain't played nobody. He's like, no, Ohio State not only hasn't played anybody, it's playing with itself. Because we're talking about the Big Ten having a subcommittee that put its subcommittee stuff before the Big Ten task force who put their stuff before the university chancellors and president, all 14 of them. There's expected to be a presentation to these chancellors and these presidents. And we're expected to find out whether or not they choose to vote in the first place. And then what that outcome of that vote might be looking at an October 17th start date to try to get a season in and to get that conference champion perhaps eligible for the college football playoff. Heather Dinich did a great job of outlining this on game night with me and Jeff Dickerson on ESPN Radio. We were on from 10 to midnight local time. If you stayed up to listen to us yammer about the day in sports, I can't thank you enough for that. This is a very big deal to me. I'm having such a good time. I want to do a good job. It's only my second show. And I thought I did a pretty good job. We talked about Naomi Osaka. We talked about the Lakers and the Rockets. We talked about today's NFL games, and we picked them. And we talked about the day in college football. It was a really good show. And I was very proud of it and really excited to be a part of it. And I will always be grateful for this opportunity. Third takeaway that I had is we can't trust the Big 12 to win. No way. We had the Chanticleers, Chanticleers, Chanticleers. Beat the dog piss, because you got to have some dogs, out of Les Miles' is Kansas. Like, somebody picked up that rock -a doodle joke, and you got my whole heart, because that's got my whole heart. Like, Edmund, that was me, trying to get Chanticleer to come back, bring sun back, because we're not trying to get eight in the darkness. But my goodness, man, the Sun Belt just decided that they're come come for the Big 12's pelts here. And now we got to talk about the Sun Belt being one of the five best teams in college football. And I actually asked Heather about this. Could the Sun Belt get a team into the college football playoff, especially if there's no Big Ten team? She said, you're probably more likely to see an American team get that slot, but you have to play ranked teams. And the thing about playing ranked teams is beating them. And if you beat them, you're cannibalizing yourself. So you might end up with a Central Florida or Cincinnati or a Memphis at the top there, even as Memphis has postponed their season, and now we're seeing Baylor and Houston in the 11 a.m. kick slot. Joel Klatt and Gus Johnson are going to be on for that. Fourth takeaway I had is the ACC is trash. It's not as trash as the Big 12, but it's trash. It's Clemson in parts. Clemson stomped the mud hole in Wake Forest and walked dry. Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne look like Trevor Lawrence and Ad Travis Etienne. Brent Venables' defense looked like Brent Venables' defense. Wake Forest is bad. North Carolina decided to wait till the fourth quarter to actually score some points, and then Decided to cover. <sighs> but Sam Howell and that North Carolina team, we might have overestimated how good they are. You look around the rest of the ACC, you're going, Georgia Tech beat Florida State in a game where Florida State blocked three kicks? What are we doing? I watched Georgia Tech lose to Temple last year, 24-2. And now Mike Norvell has caught L after L after L, and we might see somebody try to go get Willie Taggart to take this job back even as he is coaching at Florida Atlantic right now in the Conference USA. Next takeaway that I had 
was Spencer Rattler's really good. He set a number of freshman records at Oklahoma at quarterback tonight. He was 14 of 17 for 290 yards with four touchdowns in one half of football. He threw <laughs> his first seven passes to seven different receivers in a game that Oklahoma won 48 to zero. Spencer Rattler is the goods. If you didn't watch that game, you have no appreciation for how he just flicks his wrist and that ball travels like the Rattler is venomous. And with Marvin Mims, Charles and Rambo, Theo Weiss, you understand what he has. And then you had those three fullbacks slash tight ends in Austin Stogner and Jeremiah Hall, Mikey Henderson out there making plays for you. Seth McGowan might win Big 12 Newcomer of the Year, certainly up there for freshman because of the way that he played. Which leads me to my next takeaway. Oklahoma has the number one scoring defense in the country. Haters. <laughs> Didn't allow point. Did Texas allow points? Yeah, damn right they did. Did Clemson? Damn right they did. Show me somebody else putting zeros on the scoreboard. Goose eggs in the first time. Alex Grinch's kids absolutely positively came out to play. Brian Asamoah picking up where Kenneth Murray Jr. left off. He looked fast. He looked quick. Closing like Blake in a Glengarry Glen Ross sales call. Just looked good. Pat Fields looked great. The Larry and Turner Yale had a late pick that was more like catching a pop fly. But credit where it is due. Isaiah Thomas, Perion Winfrey both looked really great next to Laron Stokes in the middle. You got outstanding play from the defense. They didn't let anybody score. They did not get up off the gas pedal. Good for them. Leads me to my next takeaway. We know nothing about this college football season. We saw teams that looked like they were sloppy. We saw teams that we thought would be good that weren't. We saw teams that had played a couple of, or played a game look better. But for the most part, I did not expect to see Skylar Thompson go out there and complete smash routes. I also didn't expect Chris Kleiman to pull him late in the game for what he said was reasons that they were getting smashed because they could not, he couldn't run. And I'm going, is he hurt? Yeah, he was hurt, but he's our best quarterback. So you build around him, hand the ball more to Deuce Vaughn, right? That's what's going to be so much fun for me about this college football season. We don't know who's good. We have an idea, right? We expect those top five teams to be good, and we have no idea who's really good because the SEC hasn't started playing football, which is really the next takeaway. We won't be able to round out what this college football season looks like until the SEC starts playing their conference-only schedule on September 26th. And if the Big Ten decides to actually play football with this new data they're getting with the daily testing that they can reach— we might not actually have an accurate view of what college football looks like until mid-October, early November. And now I'm looking at this college football season and going, wow, this could be more fun and also way scarier than we thought it could be. We're going to see a lot of players play. We're going to see a lot of dudes doing things that we've never seen them do before. We're going to see empty stands, and we're going to be happy about it. That was my next takeaway. We're very excited to be playing college football. Even as we're playing musical chairs with the games, games are being postponed and moved left and right. Notre Dame did not look like Notre Dame. I mean, Duke was in that game up until the end. Duke shouldn't be in a game with Notre Dame. Not if Notre Dame expects to play in a college football playoff and win, which also leads back to that point, right? Clemson will be there. Oklahoma might be there. Texas looked outstanding. I mean, Sam Ellinger threw for 400 yards and one half of football. It's UTEP, but still, right? I'll take that. Jordan Whittington getting hurt does not help you. But again, a win is a win. And for the teams that are playing, I guess, the 6 o'clock kicks, 7 o'clock kicks, they decided not to day Satan. And then we got Kansas being Kansas. Maybe 66-year-old Les Miles is not the dude to lead a bad football team through the middle of a pandemic. Maybe that's just not his bag. All right. If you like the show, please listen to the RJ Young Show podcast. Wherever it is you get your podcast, leave a five-star review. If it is a positive review, I will leave it on the live shows. We do the live shows on Mondays and Wednesdays at 3 o'clock Central Standard Time, and we do the Saturday podcast where more than likely I talk to a really outstanding guest. This week's guest was Quincy Avery, noted quarterback coach and great developer of quarterbacks. Very intense conversation with him. Very cool conversation with him. Thanks for being here. All right, that's it for me. Doses.